Hello, I am Lise Colucci, and I'm one of the life coaches at Queen Being, where we help you to discover, understand, and overcome narcissistic abuse in toxic relationships. What happens when you tell the narcissist that they are abusive? Is this a good idea? Is it ever a good idea? Does it work? What is it that you need from that? And do you get what you need? Somebody asked me, what should they tell the narcissist? It, would it help get them closure? Someone was looking for closure, was looking to express what they feel. Is it ever a good idea to let them know what they are, right? So, no. <laughs> the answer is no. What will happen is you will maybe express that you feel abused. You feel hurt. You feel like things were lies. You feel like... Um, the life you had led with them wasn't really what it, what you thought it was. You might um, tell them things in good, in hoping that it will actually get them to see what it is they did to you, and and to actually have some conversation about it or an apology or something. I don't know. We all look for different things, but what happens is there's an instant flip most of the time. Most of the time, the narcissist goes into a complete reaction of narcissistic injury and we'll call you crazy. So within three minutes of a conversation or less, you will be the crazy one. You're crazy for the way you feel. You're crazy for the way you think. Nothing that you say or wrote or whatever will be read or heard as legitimate, and everything will be excused away as you being out of your mind. That none of it was real. They, how dare you accuse them of being an abuser? They did nothing but good for your life. They tried hard to be a good partner, so on, so on, so forth. And this can go on and on. Then what can happen is they will start smearing you with the fact, the fact that you are crazy. You're the crazy one, right? So that's one scenario. I'm sorry, but it's true. Another scenario might be they go into a rage. And they go into a narcissistic rage and they start attacking back, saying all the things about you that were abusive and projecting back onto you all the abuse. So basically, if, if you're hearing what I'm saying, the closure never comes and the feeling of being heard never happens. In fact, it makes it worse because it proves, well, it doesn't prove anything except that they are toxic, right? Because a healthy person, if accused of something, says, whoa, wait a minute, what did I do? Or how is that? How, how do you see that? You know, they, they go into it. They engage. They want to know. Even if they're feeling um, like, you're, like you're making an accusation that isn't true. But it's across the board. They call us crazy. Okay? And that's where we get dubbed the crazy ex-girlfriend for the new supply. And they can even show proof if you've written it down. Look, she thinks, look at all this stuff she said about me. That is insane. I am such a nice person. How could that, how could, she, how could after all I've done, you know, she, she say these things. So one, one lesson is beware anyone who says their, their ex is crazy. And the other one is if you don't want to be the crazy one, so to speak, don't tell the narcissist what you think they are, what you know they are. It doesn't do any good. It's not going to help you. It's not going to change the situation. Another thing they might do is come after you in a smear campaign in other ways to discredit you because if they feel fear that you're going to then spread that information to other people, that they are a toxic person or that they were abusive, then they have to kind of um, do it first so that your credibility is lower. They try to lower your credibility with people around you, especially if you're in a community where you maybe share, uh, share employment or have shared friends or shared social situations, they will definitely try to smear you so that they do not, so that they, it's like, you know, preemptively smear you so that you look like you're totally crazy, right? And therefore anything you say is not credible. So I would say, no, it's never a good idea to tell them, okay, it's not never a good idea. It's never going to give you the results you might want. Unless the only result you want is just to say the thing and be done with it. And you can do the write that letter, say whatever you need to say, and then block them instantly. And, you know, for some people that's good. And for other people, that's also not good. So it, it's better just to leave it be and walk away knowing that what you know is your truth. And their truth is nothing but a bunch of made up projections and lies. And um, they create the world they want to see and pretend that they're that thing. Okay, so they are not seeing reality for what it is.
pretending or lying about the fact that they were harmful to you and they will never admit it. Ah, there's the other thing. They laugh. They'll mock you. So back to the first topic, they'll mock you. They'll mock you. If you tell them what you feel and what you are actually experiencing and what the truth of your life was, they'll mock you. It's not pleasant. But if you reveal to a narcissist that who they are, like if you say to them, um, you know, what you did was gaslighting and that's abuse. They're not going to say, oh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have gaslighted you. <laughs> They're going to say, what are you talking about? You're crazy. If you would be, if you would just speak clearly or if you would just this or if you would just that, I wouldn't have to that. You know, they, there's no, uh, what I'm saying is don't do it. Don't, don't even give them the benefit. Don't even give them the, um, any power in it. They will project it back on you. They'll bounce it back on you. They'll throw it back at you. They call you crazy. All, all the stuff I said in the beginning is what they do. <laughs> it's not, it's not going to give you, it's not going to give you an ounce of satisfaction or an ounce of closure or an ounce of feeling heard. It's just going to create more. In fact, it can lend to trauma bonds because what it can do is create drama that then goes back and forth for a while with the narcissist about, you know, how they are too. No, you're not. Yes, I am. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. You know, you don't need the drama. Just get out and get away. So sometimes when we let them know what we, what we believe and what we feel and what's going on, they will actually own it. They'll say, oh, you're right. I did these things. This is kind of rare, but some of them do. And they'll say, I'll get help. I'll get help. I'm so sorry. Don't leave me. I'll get help. Well, so of course you stick around because you know, you're a committed, devoted and kind, loving person. They're not going to get help. If they are, if they're displaying no empathy or very limited empathy and many of the other signs of narcissistic abuse, like gaslighting, projection, silent treatment, you know, all the stuff we talk about, if they're doing that to you and they're being abusive, they can go get help all they want. And they can go prove it to someone else, honestly, or they can go get the help outside of your home and just like go and get their help, whatever they need to do. But it, it's not going to, it's not going to change them. Someone without empathy can't change. That's a sad, it's a sad fact. And I actually feel, you know, a bit of sadness for them because they can't change um, with how much they hurt people. My sadness wanes fast, but, but it is a tragic thing that someone cannot change. I can't fathom it, but like to be that way but it's like they literally can't so there you go take care you guys and as always i wish you well on your healing and i look forward to talking to you next time don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button and i will see you later goodbye